Hey guys, welcome to the Rebel Workshop. Today's video I'm going to make a wee warning sign to go on the outside of the workshop door because sometimes it gets a wee bit dangerous in here. So let's do this. So for the warning sign, of course I'm doing a Star Wars themed sign. I am doing a Star Wars room and I'm a massive Star Wars fan. So it has to be done. Now, what I'm basing it on is a wee sign that's in Empire Strikes Back uh, when they're on Hoth. Uh, and there's actually a wee deleted scene that you can search for. I'm going to put the link into the, the description as well so you can see it for yourself. Where the Wampas have actually managed to get into the Rebel base. The Rebels have then shut them off, closed the door, put a sign up, stopping people from going in. But then, later on, when the Empire gets into the base... When they're trying to escape, 3PO actually tears the sign off so that it, the Empire doesn't know what's inside the room. I'll let you watch the video, it's actually fairly funny, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm going to base it on this sign. Uh, now, I'm not going to be doing a rectangular sign like the original. I'm actually going to be using a round metal plate that I've had for years. But it's going to be pretty much the same. Still going to have the red symbol on it under the yellow background. Now the text and the writing, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do that yet. Uh, but if I do, it will be done in Arabic instead of this writing. Uh, the original sign was just made up. Well, who knows what. Um, but using Arabic, at least it will match in with everything else. Which is used in the room. So once I found plenty of images, I then copied some, saved some, went into Illustrator. I drew up this outside of the, the metal plate, so I know the exact size of it. Imported an image. Now, to me, some of these lines weren't matching up properly, and I didn't really like it too much. But I used that as a basis to draw up my own symbol. I uh, sized it up to fit in the actual circle of the sign um, I also came up with some lettering as well just in case I want to do that or not still not quite sure if that's going to happen or not but yeah time to print it out so I've got everything I need to get started I've got the old metal sign uh, it used to be I think a toilet sign maybe maybe not I can't remember I'm sure it had like the wee man on it and it was just like a vinyl sticker and I just peeled it off. Um, but I've had this for years. It's been in a storage box for years. Came across it a couple of weeks ago and decided I need to use this for something. And this was the perfect thing for it. So with the symbol printed out as well, I'm going to use this as a stencil. I just need to cut out the, the shapes. Then it'll be stuck onto the sign and sprayed on with the different colours. Also, as I can see, I've also done the, the writing as well. I've did this on masking tape just in case I do want to use it. Uh, and again, that'll be just cut out as a stencil. I've got the spray paint. The different colours. I've got my primer to start with. The red for the, sign, the symbol and yellow for the background. I'm also going to be doing a bit of um, weathering to it. Some uh, paint chip technique to it as well. Uh, to do this, I'll be using some masking fluid. Yeah. I've also got a bit of acrylic sheet as well. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. Again, this is something I bought ages ago for another project and never used it. But might mount the metal onto the acrylic sheet just to give it a wee bit extra. I don't know detail to it. Uh, but again, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that. Once it's all painted and things, I'll then decide what I'll do with it. If not, I could use it for something else. So first thing I need to do is sort out the masking fluid for the chipping effect. Now there's several different techniques you could use to do this. I'm using masking fluid. Um, you could use toothpaste. You could use mustard. Uh, both these techniques uh, take a wee bit more cleaning up afterwards. 
Whereas this, you just rub it off and it comes off. So basically all you're doing is putting stuff down where you want the metal to shine through. Once you put that down, let it dry. You spray it with your spray paint. Once it's, everything's dried and done, you then just come along, rub it off, and it reveals the, the metal underneath, giving it a bit of a chipped effect. As I say, this is a lot easier, but it's not the cheapest. This stuff is quite expensive. But yeah, here we go. So the idea here is to try and make it as random as possible. You don't want it being uniform at all. So I'm just picking off random wee bits around the edge. A few wee bits in the middle. Just deciding where else I could put it. Yeah, here I think. So you now just have to let it dry. I'm a bit impatient, so I'm going to use a hair dryer to dry it. So that's it pretty much dry. Yeah. Now I need to get my coat of grey primer. So normally I would go outside to spray paint. Uh, I don't really have anywhere in the house to do it, ventilation wise and overspray wise. But unfortunately, it's snowing outside. And I can't kind of spray in the snow. So I'll have to figure something out. It's the only place that I could actually spray paint in the house is up in the loft. So I've had to come up here, put down some old cardboard boxes. I've got a mask on. The room's fairly well ventilated. I've got the window open. So here we go. I've outed the, the metal on a bit of cardboard just to give me something to hold on to while I'm spraying it. I'm giving it a few light coats. So that's the primer done. The tin does say it takes 24 hours to dry properly so I'm just going to leave it till tomorrow. And then I'll come back in with the coat of yellow on the top. Hopefully it's a, they'll stop snowing by tomorrow, but we do live in Scotland, so tomorrow it could be raining. Yay, Scottish weather. Anybody else think this looks, looks like an old PS1? Just the shape of it. Yeah. Just a wee thought. Paint's drying, I may as well just cut the stencil out. Give me something to do, I suppose, eh? Now remember when you're cutting stencils out like this, to use a sharp knife. So as I said before, try and remember to use, use a sharp knife. I tried doing this one before and the knife wasn't sharp enough. And as you can see, it's kind of torn the paper. Yeah, so remember, sharp knife. Now I'm going to give this a wee try. Um, 
still not sure if I'm going to use these yet or not, but if I do, I want them to be already cut out, so I don't need to worry about that too much. Um, yeah, here we go. Now I do have to keep this wee bit because this fits back in here and I'll have to stick that down individually. Um, yeah. Now this is more of a handwritten style font so I think I'm just going to stick with this one. If I do use it I'm going to use this one and it should be easy enough to do. Because I've already stuck it down to another bit of masking tape I just need to peel it up and it'll come away and I can stick it to the sign to paint. Just have to remember to keep a hold of this wee boy. So it's the next day. This primer has dried overnight. Which is great. Bad news is it snowed even more last night. And it's supposed to be snowing again today. So back up to the loft for the coat of yellow paint. There you go guys, that's the yellow paint dry. So you can see the wee lumpy bits, those are the masking fluid. And I'll just start scraping these away, rubbing these away, and it'll reveal the metal underneath, and it'll give the chipped paint effect. Yeah. Let's start with this big bit. It doesn't really take much, you're just really rubbing it and peeling the fluid off. There we go, chipped paint. Now sometimes it's a wee bit hard to see where you've done it, but you can usually feel it. There we go. Nice and checked. So now I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to place the symbol on the, the sign itself. Now I think this is the best orientation for it. There's a wee bit of chipping down here, which is great. I'm going to actually add some more masking fluid to this. So when I spray the red onto this, I can peel off the masking fluid and it will still reveal that chip underneath it. I might put just a wee couple of wee dashes here and there as well and it would give a wee, a wee bit of a warm effect as well to the red paint. Right, so I'm going to add more masking fluid as I said just to give a wee bit more weathered look to it, used look to it. As I said I'm going to start off with this little chip. What I'm going to do is try and just cover up just a wee bit more of the yellow paint. That way it will give it a wee layered effect. That 
should do it. So for the stencil, I'm just going to line up the outer circle with the edge of the sign, and that will be perfect. There we go, time to spray the red. So there's the red painted. I've dried it with a hair dryer quickly. And now we're just going to try and peel it off. That looks great. Alright, let's try. I'm masking these wee bits. I'm just going to leave the dry properly, give it a wee clean, then on to the next step. So I have decided I'm going to try and give the writing a go. Uh, we've already peeled the masking tape off the other bit of paper. I just need to stick it down now. Hopefully it goes down fairly easy. Of course, this wee bit as well. Too bad we've not got any nails. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, so I'll just mask off, mask off the rest of this, then give it a wee coat of white which I'll only have a little bit left of and we'll see how it looks so that's it done with a coat of white spray paint what I also did just as a, a wee experiment really was to add some glow in the dark paint on top of it um, I don't know how it'll work out but it might add a wee bit extra to it, you never know. So I guess I'll just have to unmask this now. There we go. Now there is a wee bit of overspray. It's a wee bit hard to see, but there is a wee bit of overspray there. But I'm sure I could clean that up easily enough. Yeah, just leave that to dry now. So I've tried cleaning up the overspray. It's not really worked at all, to be honest with you. Uh, part of me is pretty unhappy how it's turned out. Wee tip, throw away paint you don't like using. Even if it's the last bit you've got and you want to keep it for something else. If you're not happy how this paint works, throw it away. Which I'm going to do now with this tin of paint that I've actually used. Uh, but, it's okay. These things happen. They're not always perfect. And the sign is supposed to be used and worn looking anyway. And I think that's just added to the effect of the sign as well. Whereas it looks like someone's actually just came along with a stencil and a cheap can of spray paint and just sprayed on top of the existing sign. So, yeah. Throw away your rubbish spray paint. If you don't like it, throw it away. Tip of the day. 
So next I need to make it look a wee bit dirtier, it's a bit too pristine looking just now, this should have been, it should look like it's been up somewhere for ages where it's been dirty and not been cleaned and things like that, so I'm going to give it a wee black wash on top of it. It's just This is just made up of black acrylic and some water. I've just watered it down a wee bit. I think you can see it there. Uh, it's watered down acrylic. I'm just going to dab this on all over the place, wipe it off and keep on going with that. Yeah. I'm trying to get into the wee crack so it makes them stand out a wee bit. You don't need to be perfect with this because weathering is a natural process. Now, doing this, it does look like it's got to be a mess, but Bear with me and you'll see the result. So I'm just using a bit of kitchen roll just to dab it off. dry and I'll come back in again. So I just dried a wee bit. That first pass is actually not too bad. I'm actually quite happy just how it's turned out. It has darkened the white up a wee bit. So I might have to do something about that. marks here and there with some paint that's on the brush on the, the towel what I'm doing is just crumpling up the towel itself putting a wee bit of paint on a part of it then just using that lightly to make some marks and come back in with a cleaner part of the towel and almost rub it away. Yeah. Now you don't have to be perfect with this, it's one of those processes that it's supposed to look dirty random so try not to be perfect with it as I said I, um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist to be honest with you but this just lets you be free and do what you want um, if there's some bits that you don't like it looks too much you could use another wetter uh, towel as well and you can rub it off if you want to just like that Now it is all about layers when you're doing weathering like this and you don't want to go too much if you do it too much then it looks fake and it looks like you've, you've, someone's actually did it like that whereas if you leave it quite minimum it does look more natural natural as well yeah I think I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to leave it just as it is So once the weathering paint had dried, I then just gave it a clear coat of matte varnish just to seal everything in. Yeah. I'm really happy how this is turning out. It's going to look great. So to mount this to the door, what I'm going to be doing is using this button fix system. I came across this at work. Uh, it's used to mount signs where you don't want screws being visible. I don't want to drill through this. I want it to be look like it's stuck to the wall. And it makes it easy to come on and off. It's basically, this wee plate gets stuck to the back of the sign. 
the wee button then gets drilled to where you want it to go and it just slides in and attaches like that. Uh, makes it easy getting it on and off as well. But it does have similar attributes to what they used in the prequel Star Wars films for the lightsabers. Um, to attach them to the Jedi belt, they had these button head things. Uh, this is called a cover tech system. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much identical how it works. Uh, the Jedis would have this wee thing on their their um, belts and the lightsaber would just clip in and it would be able to hang from the belt and it would just come off again. Uh, it was actually used prior to the Star Wars films. They didn't come up with this idea for pagers and cell phones and mobile phones to attach to people's belts. If you remember people walking around in the 90s with pagers stuck to their belts, they probably used that system. And yeah, someone's came up with the same kind of idea for signs. I actually bought a few of them because I've got a couple of other ideas I'm going to be doing soon. Um, so I needed some more, but it should only need one um, to actually attach it to the door. It actually came with a little center mark thing as well, so you could draw the hole where it's going to be mounted. Yeah, it's a good wee system, but Star Wars related as well. So I've decided I am going to use this acrylic circle to mount the metal plate onto, uh, just to give it a wee bit extra detail. Um, I think it'll look pretty good, especially since it's edge glow as well, so the edge of it glows, can't really see it too well on the camera, but yeah, I'm going to glue this all together, you can kind of see it against my fingers there, um, so I need to glue the metal sign to this, then I need to glue this bracket thing to the back of this, and we're good to go. When you need something heavy to put on your sign where it glues, you may as well just use a Jedi Holocron. So the glue's all dried, it is now stuck all together. You can see the glow in this, so that's all edge glow acrylic as well, which is quite good. And the mount on the back, you can see the glue as well. Yeah, just the time now just to get it on the door. I really love how it's turned out. So I've already attached the button to the door. And it was just a case of sliding the sign onto it. In case you're wondering about the glow in the dark paint, it did work. It's not the brightest, but it worked. So there you go guys, that's the sign up on the door. I think it looks brilliant up there and it should keep people out if we're doing anything dangerous in here, which we don't do much of. But just in case. If you like what you saw, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time on the Rebel Workshop.